Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about irregular surfaces in FreeCAD and how to, in some ways that you can create them. Now, uh, my journey with irregular surfaces has to do with creating a quarter panel for a car. So, uh, you know, this is a picture of a random Honda Accord that I got off the internet, and I'm looking to create this quarter panel um, using using surface tools in FreeCAD, and I'm trying to stick to the basic included workbench tools. Uh, just to get to know FreeCAD better uh, and to know its basic functionality without add-on workbenches. There are some add-on workbenches like NURBS and um, some others that uh, deal with surfacing in, in, in greater complexity. But I want to stick with the, simple tool, the more simple tools for now. So before I get into that, let me show you, tell you one um, about FreeCAD. I'm using .17 and that's this you know, 12.643 Git version. And please note, this is 11-24-2017. Uh, uh, the version on the 22nd, 21st, and 20th, I think, have a problem with Sketcher where when you select a tool in Sketcher, the FreeCAD crashes. So either get it well before that or make sure you get it on this date um, at any rate. So I started out with a quarter panel. Here's, here's some of the results. Let me just move some of this stuff out of the way. So this was my first sort of uh, entry into the, into, um, into the quarter panel. And you can see I got, I got results that, you know, it was, it was useful, but it wasn't, wasn't going to be what I needed. And I'll show you a little bit of how I did that. I, I took two method, methodologies. One was with using Sketcher. And I'm just going to move these faces out of the way so that, uh, let's see. I'm just going to move these all out of the way so we can create new ones. I'm going to have a stack of them before I'm done. So the first way I did it was with Sketcher. And you can see these curves in Sketcher um, each are on their own sketch. So if I if I um, show you the sketch, so they each are their own curves. So if we open them up, open one up, you'll see uh, we lost it there. Let's try it. So when I open up a sketch, you see it's a curve with um, with two lines, and this was for uh, just for setting length and stuff, just to help constrain it a little bit more. And then the other thing that is important to note on the other two sketches, uh, I use an external geometry to connect these points to the other two sketches. So they have to be contiguous; they have to be connected in space, otherwise the surface won't work. So the way I did this one was if you select these three and then you use the uh, you advanced utility to create shapes, you can do face from edges. And let's, oh, let's try that again. Face from edges. So you have to collect, uh, click each, each edge that you want to include and then you have to click create. And that'll create your face. Now this is sits as a separate entity so if you if you modify your sketch it will not modify that face um, which I guess depending on your need could be good or bad but so you see how it didn't change so I guess that's would be considered non-parametric so you can do the same thing with draft splines these are B splines from the draft workbench uh, which were a little bit harder to create than the sketch ones um, because it's a little bit harder to move in 3d space and the draft workbench and I won't go into the detail on that in this video. There's some others of mine that have that, but it works the same way. I can I can click on the B spline, click the advanced utility face from edges, and select the three edges that I want. I think I can just click these. Nope, you gotta you gotta control click. And the the red, black, and blue are just colors I use to highlight these. So I, with face from edges selected, I hit create, and again that's its its own entity. It's not tied to those wires. So we can transform that as well out of the way. So you can see I got my stack there because I've been fiddling the, with this for a while. That looks interesting. Um, so you could use this as a manufacturing template for multiple faces or just copy those. At any rate, so I moved on to, I tried to do this thing with the photos where I traced a sketch over the photo and it that didn't quite work out so I I just kind of trashed that approach. Um, but the thing to, the takeaway was that if you use the image workbench, you can import 
a, an image onto a plane. Um, but keep keep in mind though, when it imports, it may import like this. And I said, wow, it didn't work. But if you see there's a faint outline and then you flip it around and oh, it's on the other side. So for some reason, my version, I don't know if it still does. When I did this, it imported it backwards so you couldn't see it. So it has a little bit of use, usability issue there. So after that, I moved on. I did uh, a second round with that quarter panel piece. And you can see here, I, I did some playing with, um, with the edges. And I used, the, the tool I used to do this was in the part design. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hide one of these so I can do another one. So I created copies of these draft wires using draft, move, and copy. But more importantly, uh, if you select the two wires, you can create a ruled surface. And so that's how I was creating the flange there. Uh, but it's not what, quite what I wanted because you can see that just copying this wire down, down creates a uh, non-uniform flange there. Now this, this one's uniform because I just copied them straight over. But I need, really need to scale, scale that wire. So that might not work. And also then if I want to do this head shape, uh, headlight cutout, that's going to be a little more difficult, I think, in this approach. I'm not sure. So I moved to my my next approach, and this was um, using Bezier curves with the uh, with the ruled surface. And I'm gonna so I'm gonna just try to. Uh, and the advantage there is that these curves follow the the ruled surface. So I created these Bezier curves by using in the draft workbench the tool uh, B spline. So I'm I'm sorry, I said Bezier, but they're B spline. Bizet or whatever, but these are B spline. And what I did was I just created a straight line, just kind of as a rudimentary getting started sort of thing. And then what I did was I copied it using using the draft move with copy selected to get a bunch of them. So then to create these sections, all I did was select both lines. And then in the part workbench, I think I have two two there. And then in the part work bench, you use the uh, ruled surface. So in this case, I created the ruled surface, then I moved these curves. So the ruled surface follows the line that it's attached to, which kind of gives you some nice visual feedback. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, go into that on, in this video. I just wanna kind of show you what it does. So let me create a, a ruled surface between these two. And you see it creates it with curves. So the thing that you have to contend with is that these are weighted. So I'd have to move this one up a little bit and move this one up a little bit. And in some of my other videos, I show you how to move these points and stay in just in the Z axis or just in the Y axis. Um, but bear, keep in mind that moving these nodes is a little bit quirky. One of the things I will share is that they're only selectable from one side. See if I click here, it's not selectable. But if I click here, it's still not selectable. <laughs> uh, let's try it now. Oh, I have to be in edit, sorry. So if I select that line, go into draft mode and edit that object, you see that, let's try it again. So if I go from here, I can't select it. But if I go from this side, it's I can select it. So it was, let's say I move that line here and let's bring back our, let's bring back our, our uh, ruled surface that I hid. And you see now, it, now it's shaped correctly, uh, not shaped differently. Um, so you can do that arbitrarily, or you can do that in a controlled, measure, measured way. Let's do one more, and I'll just do an arbitrary point. So you can see, oops. So wow, it changed it really badly. So at any rate, so you can see you can create uh, various ruled, various surfaces uh, in FreeCAD, and there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So if you like this sort of walk around tour of surfaces, make sure you subscribe. And uh, if you want to be updated for new videos, make sure you click on the alarm button and also make sure you have a great day. Thanks.